football, you will never win or earn your living. That's a prophecy. Let's go FIFA! Let's go FIFA! Thank you! How can you say that they do not deserve to have the World Cup? Because uh, you, you are not the judge. 2018 FIFA World Cup, ladies and gentlemen, will be organized in Russia. Crisis? What is a crisis? If somebody of you would uh, describe to me what there is a crisis. They have influence, for not saying more, uh, Michel Platini at that time uh, to vote uh, for Qatar. What do you say about you at But I'm sorry that I am, as president of FIFA, this punching ball, and I'm sorry for, for football. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Beyond the Game. We are here in Visp, a small mountain village in Switzerland and the home of former FIFA president Sepp Blatter. We spent a day in the company of the man who led the organisation for nearly two decades as he tries to adapt to life after football following a ban for his role in FIFA's wide-ranging corruption scandal. Now over the next 26 minutes we will learn more about the schoolboy who never liked authority he will tell us exactly what happened in the run-up to the controversial decision to award the World Cup to Russia and Qatar. And he'll tell us why he thinks his world crumbled in 2015. Mr Blatter, thank you very much for talking to us on TRT World. I want to start by asking you about your life now. Here we are in these beautiful uh, surroundings. Are you enjoying the slightly quieter pace of life these days? Uh, definitely I am uh, enjoying my life and uh, today especially because we are back in my home city uh, where I have been born and uh, where my family is still living here and uh, I have an apartment here. I was born here in, uh, in, in FISP in a, in a house which does not exist any longer. I was a premature and uh, when I was born not even uh, seven months uh, I had only one kilo and 500 grams. So uh, they, they couldn't put me uh, anywhere then in a, in a basket, in a basket, and they didn't know if I will survive or not. And I was always struggling uh, for my life. This has marked my life, uh, where I'm uh, still, uh, I'm, uh, still working. Uh, because if you, start, if you stop working, you stop your life. Um, I'm doing well now. I had a, a kind of uh, uh, problems with my, uh, um, with my health, especially with uh, my, my spine. Uh, the, uh, with movements, nowadays it's okay, I can move normally and uh, I'm a happy man. Okay. So we got on the left side then there. Blatter's journey took him all the way to the top. As president of FIFA, he helped transform the World Cup into the biggest sporting event on the planet. But here in Visp, he's simply Monsieur Blatter. I was going up from the school and then here, um, because we started the school every morning in the church at 8 o'clock. There was a mass, we had to be there. Did you enjoy school? Uh, yes, I enjoyed. Not always, not always, because uh, there was a much, much, uh, too much discipline for me. Right. And um, I was... Uh, a little bit uh, uh, too easy. Uh, I was uh, um, in my approach of life. So if, uh, too much discipline? Have you always not been a fan of authority? Uh, uh, um, I, was, I was not a fan of that. And finally I learned it because I made then later a, a career in the military. And this is where you moved? How old were you? No, no, I was, uh, I was uh, visiting my grandparents here. This was this house here. They were living here in this house. So what is your first memory? This is... Neighbourhood. This is this house where they, they lived up there. Where, where you, have, uh, you have to go in there and here. I was going to ask, you said you didn't like the discipline perhaps of school. What were your parents like? Were they strong disciplinarians oh. as well? Oh. They disciplined me. They, 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 can, I, uh, can you imagine that at the primary school in Fisk, it was forbidden to play football? And we played football, forbidden, but with tennis balls. But we haven't had the shoes, 
So they know it. They knew it at school that you, you, you kicked. Then you were, you were punished at school. You went home. Mama said, hey, you have, uh, you played football, <laughs> punished again. So it was, it was a double, double punishment. Remind us of the story when you got your first contract as well, and your father looked at it. Uh, the, my father uh, looked at that, and then uh, and I was so proud. And then I came home, and I was so happy and said, Papa, can you imagine I can play with Lausanne and Sport? But I need your signature. He looked at that, I remember, blue, blue. Like go with blue. For me, it was such a shock. He said, in football, you will never win or earn your living. That's a prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my security? But Blatter certainly did make money from football. In 2015, it was revealed his salary was $3.6 million. Here we go, sir. Huge sponsorship and broadcast deals turned FIFA into a cash cow. To some, he's the man who brought football to New Horizons, taking the tournament to Africa and Asia for the first time. For others, he was in charge of a corrupt and bloated organisation whose members were intent on lining their own pockets. Within the FIFA staff, um, people were actually quite supportive of him, but, but the issue which actually disappointed a lot of them wasn't the payment to Platini and some of the other corruption issues, it was when FIFA released the details of quite how much Seth Blatter himself was being paid. We just don't know what he knew and what he didn't know. But one thing you can say about Seth Blatter, in his dotage, if you like, is that he, at heart, um, was and still is um, a football fan. And that you can never take away from him. Blatter's desire to return to this might be based on more than just a love for the town. In 2016, he told a journalist he didn't go to France for the European Championship through fear of being arrested by US authorities, saying, I will therefore not take the risk of coming to your country unless I receive an official invitation from the Federation. If that's not the case, I will not go. France is strongly linked to the United States. Do you feel, because of everything that's happened, do you feel like a, a, a comfort here, a safety here, away from the crazy world yes, of football and, yes, and all that, of that? That's, that's correct. Here I, I feel really safe mm. and uh, I, I, I feel totally accepted. Also they don't need to say, yes, I like you or whatever, but I am one of them. I am one of them. So the kid from these cobbled streets went on to become one of the most influential figures in world sport, dining with presidents and world leaders. But it started going wrong in 2010, with FIFA's controversial decision to award the next two World Cups to Russia and Qatar, bids that were said to be rife with corruption. And then, in 2015, the House of Cards came crashing down. I think that Blatter was more attracted to the, um, the power and the image and the glory that came with being the president of FIFA. I mean, let's face it, everywhere he, he went, he was treated as a head of state. When you actually listen to him, was quite how dominant in his mind the politics of FIFA were to him. His whole account of his time at FIFA uh, is kind of described in political terms. Uh, because I have uh, now, I could say, a new and your hobby. And the hobby is um, geopolitics. Uh, and the question mark is, uh, is football or sports in general, I was also 18, uh, 16 years member of the IOC, is the sport uh, a player in politics or even can the sport from time to time be a director or to take a direct influence uh, in politics. Do you believe sport can play a force for good in geopolitics? What's your conclusion to the question that you raised? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I am happy that also on, on the, on the, uh, on the um, IOC side now, uh, with the North and South uh, Korea, they, they came together. Uh, and this is what sport shall do. I suppose the, the alternative view, though, is some would say that World Cups and Olympic Games can be used by governments and regimes to uh, promote themselves. Some would say that Russia, for example, 
doesn't necessarily deserve to have the festival of football that is, is the World Cup and that the Vladimir Putin regime is using it to improve its reputation in the eyes of, of the West. Is that a, a flip side of the argument we're about, between sport and politics? Not at all. How can you say that they do not deserve to have the World Cup? Um, uh, because uh, you, you are not the judge and I am not the judge. Uh, but wh what we have done concerning the World Cup for 2018 and 2022, it was a famous uh, date in the history when we have taken the decision, we shall make a decision for two World Cups. Uh, and uh, my idea uh, behind this uh, double attribution of the World Cups would have been that one goes to Europe and in Europe we have identified that uh, uh, Eastern Europe had never had the World Cup, so we shall go there to, to Russia and we shall go with the other one uh, to the Americas, uh, especially North America, because they, they, uh, they were limping behind. Uh, and so we decided, or we, in consensus, that let's go uh, to the United States. America, but instead, the winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. <laughs> But in the last minute, with a political intervention in France uh, by the president of France at that time, Nicolas Sarkozy, uh, after a meeting uh, with the crown prince uh, of the emir of, of Qatar, uh, they, uh, they have influenced, uh, for not saying more, uh, Michel Platini at that time uh, to vote uh, for Qatar and not to vote as in a consensus in the exco we have said we shall go there uh, you mentioned the process in 2010 that date december the 2nd were you surprised when uh, when qatar won that vote naturally i was surprised uh, i was surprised in such a manner that if you go back to to look at the pictures uh, they have been uh, published uh, when i took out uh, the paper qatar uh, i was i was not the same smiling or let's say, uh, let's say, uh, face, uh, then uh, when first came out uh, Russia, uh, because Qatar was not, uh, was at that time, was not definitely my candidate. They knew it, they knew it. But now uh, Qatar has been decided, and then it's also my candidate, because as a president of FIFA, I have to uh, uh, abide to the decisions which have been taken. Why do you think Michel Platini and other executive committee members went against your recommendation and, and your suggestion? Yeah, because they have been, uh, uh, the, uh, Platini, he, he phoned me uh, directly after this meeting in Paris, in uh, l'Elysee, where, where the president uh, is. So he uh, directly phoned me and said, uh, said uh, Seb, listen, uh, there will be a problem now for, uh, for um, um, the, the USA, uh, because my president asked me, he has not said obliged me, but he asked me that uh, uh, we should consider candidature of, of Qatar because they made a, a big deal together with French uh, uh, industries and uh, Qatari industries, whatever. Uh, and then I, I asked him, and so what? And he said, listen, if, if the state president asked me, uh, then, uh, then I will. Uh, he said yes. That then I will. I will abide to that. And he told me then uh, we will have a problem now. And exactly four votes, and these four votes have made uh, four votes. Platini's votes and three of his uh, colleagues. They have made the difference. That double announcement in 2010 was the beginning of the end of Blatter's reign. Allegations of corruption have swirled around the organisation ever since. There were 24 people sitting around that executive committee in 2010. They were the most senior decision makers in world football. It's something like 15 to 17 of those people have been found to be either really seriously corrupt, some of them pleading guilt, having pleaded guilty, or to be still criminally accused of that. And then there are others that were found to be in breach, including Blatter himself and Platini in breach of FIFA's ethics code of good practice. Both Blatter and Platini were suspended by FIFA in 2015. The Office of the Attorney General of Switzerland also opened criminal investigations, which are ongoing. 
The OAG have told us 25 criminal proceedings are underway as they trawl through 19 terabytes of data. Whilst there were also raids in Italy, Greece, France and Spain. In the United States, the information given to the FBI by former FIFA Vice President Chuck Blazer in court before his death in 2017 has led to the involvement of the world's largest criminal investigation unit. The message from this announcement should be clear to every culpable individual who remains in the shadows hoping to evade this ongoing investigation. You will not wait us out and you will not escape our focus. Since 2015, 11 football executives, including former FIFA Vice President Jeffrey Webb, have been convicted of an array of corruption and bribery charges, while the men who offered them money for things like TV rights for football matches are also awaiting sentencing. In the most recent developments, Swiss prosecutors have opened an investigation into FIFA's former Secretary General, Jerome Valk, who, along with the CEO of BN Sports, a Qatari-based broadcasting company, is being investigated on suspicions of private sector bribery. At that time, I believe there was a $100 million payment from B in Sports to FIFA. Do you fear that could have had any impact on the executive committee's decision and the way that some members decided to vote? I don't know that. I don't know when they have paid $100 million. Around the time there was a payment, it was in a book that you were quoted as saying, that uh, it was a sponsorship deal from BN Sports. Oh, okay, if they, are, if, if they have been in a sponsorship contract, uh, uh, then okay. I, I don't think uh, that uh, any, any payments have had an influence on this decision uh, because um, at that time, uh, the, um, Michael Garcia was uh, the head or the president of the investigation chamber and uh, uh, in his report, which has been hidden for a long time, but it came out later, uh, he has said there is no evidence that there has been uh, a paid World Cup. It was no evidence. So this was really political influence uh, to change uh, the attribution of the World Cup. Cette décision prendra effet le plus tôt possible, à savoir la date à laquelle a nouveau président pourra être choisi par le congrès de la FIFA pour me succéder. The appeal of Mr Blatter has been dismissed and Mr Blatter remains banned from taking part in any uh, football related activity at national and international level for 6 years. The harsh reality is he'd come to the end of his career in that role anyway. Uh, there was never any indication from Mr Blatter that there was an intention from him to change that culture, to change those practices. So absolutely, he deserves to be smack, back in the, smack bang in the middle of the, um, of the telescopic sights of the Swiss and the Americans. I would say to you that Sepp Blatter was undoubtedly, undoubtedly naive uh, in terms of some of, his, some of the things he, he clearly miscalculated. Um, was he willful? I'll let the world at large decide that. So the Sepp Blatter story comes full circle. Less than 100 yards from the house in which he grew up is the home in which he currently resides, serving his ban from the game he loves. And he still takes a keen interest in football and considers himself the de facto president of FIFA still. And he's got plenty to say on next month's World Cup in Russia and the man who replaced him as FIFA president, Gianni Infantino. I want to ask you about FIFA at the moment, VAR is one big thing heading into Russia 2018. Uh, do you feel it's going to be a good thing, VAR? Uh, no, I, I think and I, um, I have uh, criticised officially in my interview with the BBC the other day, the International Football Association Board. Uh, these are the, the guardians of the laws of the custodians of the laws of the game. And they have abandoned their principle. You cannot accept a, a rule change without being sure that it will work. We have asked television, and thank you television, to promote the game, but not to be the referee finally. They should have thought about that before giving the OK, let's go. Uh, because now we're in the World Cup, OK, maybe it works. But if you score a goal now, if you score a goal, um, and you try to make a perceived movement, 
No, 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 we have to wait because the referee will say. And then everybody is waiting and then they are listening. They are listening here. And then the final he says, uh, yes, it was a goal. It takes the passion out of the game, is that it, what you're it saying? Takes, it takes the human face of the game, the errors. And if you take the errors out of the game, it's not good because it's a human game. FIFA's first big test in the post-Blatter era is the awarding of the 2026 World Cup. Following the fallout from 2010, this is one they want to get right. The contest is between a joint bid from the USA, Mexico and Canada, or Morocco, but the process is already proving controversial. What other changes do you see that FIFA want to, want to make? 48-team World Cup, no, of course. No, the 48 teams of the World Cup was only one, and now when I have seen uh, that they would deny one of, uh, of the national associations to not go to the Congress for election, uh, for, uh, for the uh, World Cup 226. Mm. Uh, they have the right to go to, the, Morocco has the right to go to the Congress, even if they will be beaten, but they have the right to be at the Congress. And is they try now to take... Is this Morocco the five-person panel? Yeah, this, uh, this uh, so-called task force. It's not correct what they tried to do. And the last one, uh, what, I'm, uh, what I was uh, uh, advocating again um, against is uh, that there is a consortium of uh, money-giving people. There's a, a lot of money around the world, but we don't know where it is controlled. But this is not my problem. Um, and then they want to buy out two competitions. Of, if you cannot buy out two competitions. Why only two competitions? Then tomorrow somebody will come and buy out the refereeing. So That's I want to ask you, Gianni Infantino is from around this region, isn't he? Yeah, he's, sh he's just nearby. Here. He's nearby. Yeah. What do you make of the job he's doing in the two years he's been there? Is he, as a fellow Swiss, is he carrying on your legacy? Do you get that feeling or, or not really? No, he could, uh, he could sit in, in a wonderful position when he became the president. Uh, he was, we, we had, absolutely outstanding financial situation in FIFA uh, and this was I think it's a big benefit for a new president coming in and for the rest uh, my education and my fair play will not allow me uh, to make comments on what he is doing. I think as far as Infantino is concerned uh, frankly one could argue that we're worse off than what we, than, than what we were like before because at least with Blatter we got a man who was passionate about football. We are in the 21st century and we have to shape the Football World Cup of the 21st century. It's not anymore the 20th century. Morocco claim that FIFA changed the goalposts in terms of bid criteria just before the bid books were submitted by adding new conditions that Morocco couldn't possibly have met. And this is exactly the kind of thing that Sepp Blatter is getting at when he talks about um, the new leadership of FIFA needing to be brought to account. What do you think the future is for both FIFA, now you're an outsider looking in, and for you personally? Well, the FIFA will always exist if they are not starting to sell out their competitions. Whatever they want to play with 48 or 72, doesn't matter. FIFA must exist as a uh, fed, uh, federation of 211 now associations and bring them together and uh, this must be FIFA. Who do you blame very finally for the, the suspension, the game that you've served for your entire life? You maintain your innocence, you use the word I think to the BBC to to Manny, the word trap, and that you don't trust people yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah, Who, who's yeah, responsible I, I, for I think it was, you know, according to Swiss law um, and uh, uh, civil law, we are all in uh, the all federations of football and uh, Olympics are bearing. Uh, if uh, something went wrong uh, in the administration, and this was this two million, and the, uh, but the 211 was that in the Congress, if something is wrong, that only members of FIFA could, uh, uh, could make an opposition. But here, somebody has disclosed, uh, disclosed this matter to the Swiss authorities. And why they intervened, the history will show us, was there also the American 
pressure that Platini should not be the FIFA president because uh, they know now that he is responsible they, for the World Cup 2022. We don't know, but I was uh, I was trapped by my own people, definitely. Mr. Blatt, thank you very much for talking okay. to us. Ciao. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it, the Sepp story from the man himself, a man who is undoubtedly engaging and charismatic. But as the FBI and Swiss prosecutors continue their investigations into exactly what went on at FIFA while he was in charge, that might not be the legacy he leaves behind for world football. I'm Paul Scott, thanks for watching Beyond the Game.